the GR Yaris and the GR Corolla are not good tuning vehicles. They're not made for it, guys. In fact, I was watching a video and I saw someone was driving a GR Corolla on track and it was tuned, mildly tuned, but they had the right modifications. The thing blew up. And there's so many examples I've seen now of GR Corollas just blowing up on track. And they're all tuned examples. And guys, these cars, I have to say, are not built for the tuning lifestyle. I know a lot of people are coming from that perspective of Japanese cars and how they were excellent to tune. You had the Supras, you had the Mazdas, you had the Nissans, the Silvias, all these different types of cars, the GTRs. And they had such a reputation in the Hondas, right? The B-series motors, uh, the K-series motors. It was such a reputation, such a culture of tuning. These were powerhouses. I know people are so excited um, for Toyota being a tuning powerhouse again and creating uh, these performance cars that enthusiasts look up to, that enthusiasts want to buy, that they want to embrace and be part of the culture. But the Toyota performance cars of today, these GR Corollas and GR Yaris's, they're not like the performance cars of old, guys. Uh, these cars have very little in the tank. These are three-cylinder, 1.6-liter turbo motors boosted <laughs> to infinity. And even though these are some solid, chunky motors, and the block is chunky, these are still on the edge. Even with that Toyota thinking, they're still on the edge. And as soon as you start adding power to these cars, it's game over, guys. The issue here is that you're taking on a lot of risks that you don't need to take. With these cars, if your engine blows up, the G16e GTS found in the GR Corolla and the GR Yaris, this is a very rare motor. I mean, it's not shared across different platforms in the GR Corolla, GR Yaris, the Lexus LBX. It's not like other engines out there where you can get a few parts from here or you could get a whole different engine. So if you blow up your motor, guys, you're going to be up for serious money, absolutely serious money. And the ECU in this car, famously, is a very difficult to tune ECU. Toyota's constantly pulling timing. They're doing all sorts of stuff with this car. And tuners will tell you it's a very difficult car to get right. And even in stock form, it's constantly pulling power based on temperature, based on a bunch of stuff, heat. It's a difficult car to get right, and not a lot of tuners can get it right. So if you can't tune these cars, what do you do, guys? Where do you go, right? Because a lot of people, they love Japanese cars. But I would say that what's the point of Japanese tuning if it's not reliable? Japanese cars always have that factor of reliability. Once that goes away, uh, the competition starts to look a lot better. And that's where if you want to tune today, you have to go with the German competition. It's the German cars you have to get, guys. The Volkswagen EA888, one of the great European motors capable of making double its horsepower. Absolutely ridiculous. In the Mark 7, 7.58 formats, these are ridiculous cars. The BMW is a B58 engine, known as one of the great tuning engines. Even the Subarus, I've got a video on my page saying don't, uh, don't tune Subarus, but I gotta say, even the FA20, FA24 engines, they're pretty low-stressed motors. They can take tuning, guys. But these Toyota engines, they're not about that life, and it's okay. I mean, these cars are rally-built cars. They're already pushed to the limit. They're reliable. They're built well. But clearly, Toyota has not set them up for tuning. Clearly, that is not the case here. And indeed, one of the worst parts is if you get something wrong, what I've seen and the reports and the things you hear, no one's got your back, right? That's one of the worst bits. Uh, if something goes wrong, it looks like Toyota's fighting all these claims. Rightly or wrongly, I can already see a culture there where when the Hyundais came out, the ends, a lot of people were ruining these cars by misshifting, which is completely the person's fault. But Hyundai was still sort of uh, paying out those warranty claims. So, you know, that's a manufacturer attitude difference where you can already see Toyota is not here to play ball. So why get yourself into an issue where you're going to have to rely on Toyota and you know it's going to be trouble? The GR Yaris, GR Corolla is absolutely special cars. I love my GR Yaris. It's one of the longest, it's, you know, it's a car I've held for one of the longest periods, right? Um, and I don't hold my cars for too long, but this one I have because I love it that much. But uh, we got to be real with each other. Tuning's not uh, a forte of this platform, and that's okay. At least not engine-wise, suspension-wise, exhaust-wise, you can go for gold. But engine, I would say, leave these cars stock, leave them untouched. I hope that helps. I'll catch you next time.